our house, none other than Dr. Deron Hepburn. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Come on, give somebody a high five next to you. Tell them welcome to the best church on the planet. You may be seated on the planet. Tell somebody on the planet. Tonight is what? That's right. Tuesday night is what? Y'all are so smart. What do we do on Tuesday night? We get to ask questions. And, but what does the questions have to pertain to? What is being taught. Is that right? So we get to ask questions pertaining to what is being taught. Now, do we have to debate on our questions? We ain't got to debate. What we don't understand, we could pray about and say, God, give us knowledge and understanding, right? Right, Manila, we could ask God to give us, help us to understand. How many of you know God, is, the plan of God is for us to have knowledge? Only Pastor Elliot. The Bible says knowledge, amen, is a good thing. Is it what? Tell somebody it's a good thing. He said, my people perish because of what? Because of the lack of knowledge. How many of you want to perish? I hear nobody said nothing there. Let's go to our Bibles to Mark chapter 12. Tonight, y'all, I spoke, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I spoke on Sunday. I was talking about the election. What I was talking about? I was talking about the election, and I was saying how you have to pray about who to vote for. How many of you remember me saying that? I was saying, because you ain't going to blame me and say, Bishop, tell you to vote one way or the other. Is that right? And only to find out after service that Joe Biden had stepped down. I didn't know that prior. I, I said all that. That was just, I didn't know. They told me after service, do you know Joe Biden just stepped down? And he nominated Kamala Harris to be the president of the United States. How many of you saw that? Well, if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, you got to watch the news, y'all. We, 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 we are going into an election year. We are in the election year. What year are we in? We're in the election year. November is where they choose the president of the United States. Right? Y'all, y'all, we can talk tonight, y'all. Y'all can make notes because this may be a little different tonight. I may tread on waters that we are not accustomed to treading on in jump ministries, but we're going to tread just, somebody say tread lightly. Tread. Amen. As the Holy Spirit leads us, amen. He's our leading guide. So we're going to talk tonight, but don't be afraid to ask questions. When I was in church growing up as a little boy, there was things I saw in church I didn't understand. But one thing I was never allowed to do in a Bible study like this was ask a question to the pastor. I wish I had a chance to. We would, after service, probably talk about it with young people. But I never had a direct access to ask the pastor to get it from the pulpit. And I would have loved to be able to do that, to be able to ask questions. Not to debate, but if I didn't understand something, I would have liked to learn more. And not just learn, but even have an avenue where I could study what was said to me. It would have given me an avenue to, to just research it for myself. Does that help anybody? So tonight we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about current issues, and we may, and then some of y'all may need to really think about why it is important to be involved in politics, why it's important to understand. We think that we live in a church, and sometimes we we try to bury our head in the sand and avoid it. But the laws that are passed in our land they affect us. You have to hear that they affect you in one way, shape, or form. If they say that you can't take your Bible to school, for instance, in the law and the government, and if you take your Bible to school, that they have, make sure you hear this, because we hear differently. I said if a law is passed that we can't take, our children can't take Bibles to school, and we're not accustomed to the law, and our child takes a Bible to school and gets in trouble, we cannot say, how come they did this to our child? Because we're not up to date our knowledge is not in place so one of the reasons why you want to know is you want to know what type of laws are being passed you want to know what your community believes what they don't what what people who are running for government believes do they believe in god you want to know these things so that you if and if you don't know these people say well i don't want to be in politics that's for them well if your child is affected in any way you can't get angry because you never found out knowledgeable what was going on. You didn't seek out. You, were, you let other people make it was your voice. Uh, you, you got to have a voice. And even if your voice may not seem like much, at least you know you had a voice. That should, and don't, again, you ain't got to say just say amen. At least you know. I think at the end of the day, for me, somebody say for Bishop, 
I would like to know that I ch if Chai School makes a, a, a change in the rule and I don't go to try to argue the change or if they call a meeting and then I just find out the rules will change and then I didn't have a voice to go and say, hey, why are you making this change and let people know, maybe change minds, maybe change minds. So having a voice is important. Does that make sense? Having is very, very important. You need to hear that and we need to exercise our voice. Even the Bible tells us to speak, confess, talk. Confess. Somebody say confess. So even the Bible tells us to confess and to talk and to open our mouths, not just say, uh, well, it just happened. It wasn't happening to me. I don't know how many of you saw on the news that a white police officer went inside a lady's house to call the police. What she did? She called the police. They said they think they, she might have had some mental issues. And she had some water on the stove. And she said to the officer, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he shot and killed her several times. How many of you saw that on the news? The young boy is raised. That's right. He's, he's listening. He raised that. So he, that, that really happened. Those are the things that are affecting our community, affecting us all around us. And we have to be aware of what's happening. Is that right? Oh, y'all ain't saying. But tell you, we can talk. Y'all could write questions. Nobody, nobody got to leave you angry tonight. Listen, we have to know as Christians, as what? As believers, Joe, Christ sets the standard for us. Christ, what sets the standard? You got to hear that Christ sets the standard. I'm going somewhere with this. So when Christ set the standard, anything we judge should not be judged based on if somebody is popular. It should not be based on the color of a person's skin, whether white or black. As Christians, what should be the first standard? Christ, very only me and Monica, we can ride tonight. Christ should always be the standard. Who should be the standard? Christ. Not whether a person is, 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 whether they are saved, unsaved. The first thing you want is you want to know how Christ, where they stand with Christ. The things you need to ask yourself first is where they stand with Christ, not color, not color, not what? And that goes black, white. You got to hear that. I, you got to understand. If I meet somebody, I want to know what is your biblical value? What is your biblical views? And I, if anybody don't believe that, my, I'm, where I'm from, I don't have a lot of Asians in my culture. The only Asians we had in our culture in the Bahamas was, was, was the Chinese restaurant. And it wasn't that many being in the Bahamas. I don't know if anybody in here from Freeport. And it used to be in the bazaar. So, I, and, and so in your culture, you're normally told to marry people in your culture. In your what? But I want you to hear this. Culture should not be your leading factor. Don't just say, man, it's Bible study. What should be your, legal, what should be your leading factor in dating? Not just, I mean, I mean, that's good, that's spiritual. But what should be a, the, beyond color, beyond the person that you're dating? What should be the leading factor? If they know Christ. If they don't know Christ, should that even be a consideration? Only my left side. If they don't know Christ, should that be a consideration? It's, they shouldn't be because uh, the criteria should be in all of our lists. Anybody have listened here for husband or wife? Your first criteria should be you want them to be saved. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to have specifics. I want him to be six foot. I want her to be five, four. You could have specifics, but you don't want to lead by culture. You want to lead by Biblical standards. Amen? I ain't getting too much amen tonight because that means you're listening. You won't let biblical standards. And I was going somewhere with that. So when I was, when I was dating because I was out, found was not in my culture per se, anybody I would have dated. You need to know that whether they were black, whether they were white. When I say anybody, it didn't matter to me what skin color they were. What mattered to me, for me, my first criteria was whether they know Christ. Does that make sense? So it wasn't that, that doesn't, it wasn't whether they were black, whether they were white, whether they were Asian, it was did they know Christ. If they didn't know Christ, then that was not even a conversation needed to be had because for me, the standard was already set. Not that I already had high standards, you could ask questions. It's because Christ already laid the foundation of the standard. He said, what communion does light up with what? How could two walk together? Y'all could talk to me. How could two walk together except they are? So the standard for dating, the standard in Christ, in who? In Christ should be what does God say about it. So the same principle should apply in politics. People don't know what side of the aisle that I am on, what side of the aisle I'm not on. The first principle you should ask yourself is, is the person safe? Are they what? 
Make sure you hear. I love how y'all listen. Are they saved? And if they are not saved or they're saying that they're saved, then you can study. You can find out issues. You can find out what biblically, because what's the standard? Christ. Christ. Uh, does Christ have a standards in the Bible? Yeah. So you can go in the Bible and see what biblically stands out in those standards. And that will, that will sort of guide you on where you need to go. And matter of fact, Jesus said in the Bible, he talked about politics. I know you all think he didn't, but he did. They tried to trap him in politics. They tried to trap him and say, what should you do when it comes to the Roman law or believing? And he told them what to do. He said, are we going to get into the Bible what he said to do? But I want everybody in this room to be clear. Because if you're not clear, you're going to get caught up in a wave. And the, wave, and the wave is dangerous. You don't want to get caught up in color. You don't want to get caught up in culture. You don't want to get caught up in the way my mama did it. You don't want to get caught up in religion. You won't get caught up and say, God, what does the standard of your word say? And if you don't understand the word, can you go to God for understanding? So you, you, everybody should have said yes. Absolutely, you can go to God for understanding. But for me, if I'm looking at something or someone, I want to know the standard. Do you come, do you, are you, are you in line with the standard that I have? And not just by you saying it, I want to see what you've done to align yourself with those standards. Because I don't even know anybody could say it, but there's a difference to do it. Whoever said right heard me. So I want to see what you've aligned yourself to, to those standards. And if you have aligned yourself to those standards to a certain extent, if both people are unsaved, then for me, it is who has aligned themselves closely to the standard of the word. Whoever, somebody on the left, make sure, don't just say men now. Who has aligned themselves closely to the standard of the word? Because the, 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 the guideline or the mark or the standard is the word. It can't be because I like you, I can vote for you. It can't be because you know my mama, because you know my daddy, I can vote for you. It can be because you know God. And because you believe what God said, or you do your best to hold true to what God says, is what's going to cause me to want to walk with you. Does that make sense to anybody in here? So you, you got to hear that. We're living in a time, y'all, where standards of the word don't matter. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you, say why it doesn't matter. That only, only, only Monica tonight. Because people are not living according to the word of God anymore. We're living in this, whoever said that's true. We're living in a society where we're trying to take God out of the society. We want God out of our schools. We want God out of, uh, 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 off the dollar. We, we, we don't want people trying to get God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. Why do we have to say God? Any which way, and what is so ironic, and you got to ask yourself is, why can people say to any, they could say to the Muslim faith, they could say to their any faith, uh, 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 and people were willing to get angry over. But when it comes to the name of Jesus, people just say it flippantly. Anybody know this besides me? It's 100% the truth. And so why do people take Christianity so lightly? Or you could say every other name except the name of Jesus. To that, just how you say, mm, that should make you think. That should make you think. That should make you look beyond. Let me tell you why you got to learn. It's important to think for yourself. When I first came to, when I was involved in ministry in the beginning, my pastor, who was a white gentleman, said to me, pertaining to another white gentleman, not to deal with him. Hear this. I'm talking to you truth. He said to me not to deal with him. And he was going down a list of reasons why not to deal with him. But how many of you know the man that he told me not to deal with was the man that was end up being a blessing to me? That's not, and so what happened? I had to find out for myself. I had to pray. I had to make that decision myself. And it wasn't, and what he was doing, he was angry with the man. Sometimes people want you to get frustrated with people because they don't like them for whatever reason, but that's not your fight. Does that make sense? So the, you got to hear that. So the man that he tried to get me not to like was the man that ended up being a great blessing to me and the man who's still a blessing to me today. So sometimes people have a different agenda than you. So you have to go to God for yourself. You have to know for yourself. And when I say know for yourself, even in that, what's the standard? Christ. So when you talk about that's the way I am, you got to guard that. Because it's not supposed to be the way you are. It's supposed God's word is supposed to have the final say. So when you start saying words like, that's just me. Let me want to do my own thing. That's just how I handle it. You have to say, not how I'm going to handle it. You're going to say, how would God handle it? Only one person heard that. So when you start saying, that's the way I am. Just let me be me. That means your standard is not the word. 
Because the standard has to be, God has required, the standard is forgiveness. So God has required me to forgive. So if God has required me to forgive, I can't say that's the way I am. God said to forgive. And God says to love your enemies. God said do good to those who despitefully use you. And it's easier said than done, but that's the standard. I have to love even when it's hard to love. I have to forgive even when it's hard to forgive. And then another standard is that somebody needs to hear is when you deal with people in this world, and again, this isn't just you, this is me. Don't think this because I'm up here. Because sometimes people frustrate you. Only me. Sometimes people may want to make you throw a blow. Only Pastor Elliot in here. Sometimes you get in your flesh regarding people. But then as Christians, we are supposed to remember that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. So it's a spiritual battle. But if we don't have Christ to bring us back to that, how many of you know we'd be getting mad at people all day? And we would be blaming people because we don't understand that this is a spiritual battle. And then when it comes to the world, the world don't talk spiritual battle. They just get mad at each other. They don't talk to each other. They I can't believe she did that. I can't believe they did that. And then we hold grudges. They get mad. But they don't know you could kill a person, but you can't kill a demon. What, what do you mean by that? Y'all should be thinking. That means if Odysse is my enemy, so to speak, and I get mad Odise and I kill Odise but it was a spirit who's influencing Odise how many of that spirit is just going to go to another person so it keeps going that's from Monica you got it so what that means is if you and I don't understand this is spiritual we can take out our frustrations on people get angry at people and I'm telling you the world doesn't understand spiritual things no matter how you try to explain to them the Bible says the natural mind cannot understand the things of God because they're foolishness unto them that's how the Bible says it's foolishness so when you try to tell somebody that's unsaved spiritual things it's like you're talking to Someone with 10 heads. They do not understand. And we try to get them to understand. But the only way that they could understand is that they have to have their spirit enlightened by the Holy Spirit. So it's hard to get an unbeliever to understand the things of God. Make sense? You got to hear that. It's uh, only Kenville. It's hard to get an unbeliever to understand the things of God. But for us as Christians, if we get caught up, an example is, I, I'm black. What am I? I'm not only my only Monica. I'm not just black. I'm black and I'm from the islands. So if you want to know about racism and prejudice, from when I started Jump Ministries, I started Jump Ministries in a town where I had a history of racism. And whoever said it, man, could tell you. Uh, we probably was there. They used to bring the blacks from Africa to work the sugar canes in New Smyrna Beach. So where I was, where Jump was started, we were like in the core of it. I think there was a place outside of New Smyrna Beach that they used to call Samsula. Somewhat. And they said in that area, in that area they used to hang blacks. Now, y'all got to hear this now. I'm not black American. I'm black bohemian. So that means when I came, I didn't just get it from white. I got it from blacks. I, uh, yeah, you got to hear that. Because from the, in the black culture... That was, there was a way of teaching biblical values. So they were saying, if you, didn't speak in t if, you speak in, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. Women shouldn't wear makeup. Women shouldn't wear jewelry. And now, under, go with me. So this was a small town. If, anything, un if anybody in this room understand about a small town, in a small town, most people know each other, and most of them are related to each other. I wish my, my old pastor, Ellie, it's the truth. So imagine me now dealing with the race issue, black, and coming into a culture that believed that if you don't speak in tongues, you ain't safe, and women don't wear makeup, and don't wear jewelry, and I'm teaching women y'all can wear your makeup. <laughs> I'm teaching y'all can wear your jewelry, God looking at your heart. But then the tradition, the people in that culture was teaching something different. I was, listen, you ain't got to be speaking tongues to be saved. You could know Jesus by confession of your faith. So my teaching was different. So when they saw me, they was like, who is this man from another planet coming in our city trying to change our people? Twofold. Am I making sense? So when I talk to you about, about race or, or I talk to you about having God as a standard, if you don't understand what you're fighting and God being your standard, you can get caught up in the wave. You can get caught up on how they treat blacks, what they do to blacks how they treat us. You can get caught up in it. And it isn't that they didn't treat the woman was just shot. It wasn't that they was, but we need to understand what's behind the influence of the wave. What is the enemy up to? Is he trying to divide us? Is he, what is, what, you have to understand the end goal, not what's happening right now, but what does Satan want? What is he up to? 
Am I helping anybody in, in this room? So you have to think beyond what you're seeing. You have to think, what does the enemy want? When I was going through in New Smyrna, whoever hears me tonight, I don't know if I, who I came for, one of the first things I asked spiritually, I didn't say why it was so hard. I said, Satan, why do you not want me here? This was before jump was birth. I say, why are you fight me so hard that you're trying to get me to leave? This was before jump ministry was birth. I said, why is it so hard? I said, what is it on the other side of this that makes you afraid? I didn't get caught up in culture, Candace. I didn't get caught up in what people was trying to do to me. I flipped it. I said, devil, what are you afraid of? And after I went through my testing and my proving was when Jump Ministries was birthed. But if I didn't look to the other side, I would have get caught up. Look how they're trying to treat me. I can't believe they, these people are like this. <coughs> Religion and white issues and blacks. I can't believe this. And I would have missed God's plan. I would have got caught up in emotion. I would have got caught up in the culture. And I would have missed God. And how many of you know... A lot of times when you miss God, you run to people rather than God. You got to hear that. You run to people. But how many of you know nobody could protect you better than God? <clears throat> God protected me. Y'all, The rest of y'all will clap later. And listen, tonight, y'all, I, I want you to ask questions because it, it matters. It matters for you to know. I want to know what you are thinking. I want to know what is in your mind. Because what is in your mind may be in somebody else's mind. I preached the word on Sunday about authority. And after I preached the word, someone didn't understand. Not that they were upset. They came after service and they said, Bishop, I don't understand. Uh, uh, are we making men idols? And I had to break it down to them. I said to them, it's not about making men idols. It's about you understanding you've never seen God. And we can only respond to people or our leaders the way we respond to God. And I gave scriptures, and they understood it to a certain extent. But they say, you know, I want to go home and read more. But how many of you know, as we begin to dig deeper, I begin to recognize it was not just her not having a problem with the scriptures. I understood she never had authority in her life. Whoever said, hmm. So, so because she never had a father there, and it was hard for her to adjust to her father. The men that was in her life hurt her. She got in fight with men. So every person that symbolized authority, she had issues with. So how many of you know she had issues with no father being there? She had issues with relationships. How many of you know she loved issues with me being a spiritual authority? Because she was never healed properly from past issues. Does that make sense? And so when we're not healed properly, we have a tendency to carry that on into future relationships. Does that make sense to anybody in here? So we have to know, and it's important for us to understand as believers that the standard has to be God, and we want to be clear on that standard. If we're not clear on that standard, we could get caught up in, in, in Black Lives Matter. We could get caught up in, 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 in the wave of uh, now we get, and people were walking into restaurants, telling people in the restaurant, shut it down. We come to take over. We want our, going through neighborhoods, we want our property back. Y'all going quiet. And we got access of, is that the way Christ would want us to respond? Don't answer that. Yeah, look, you're, that ain't, ain't any questions yet. But that's what was happening. And a lot of people were getting into the wave of it. Um, just for lack of a better uh, 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 illustration, Jonathan came to be, we all knew Jonathan stood in the, in the bubble. And, and a lot of people didn't understand why he stood. After everything passed, a lot of those people said, Jonathan, if I had it to do all over again, I would have done it different. I wouldn't have kneeled. After they found out, so that shows you a lot of people get caught up in the wave of culture and they don't have a standard. It wasn't that Jonathan was different than them, but Jonathan's standard was the word. Only Plummer heard that. And so when you and I don't get caught up in getting angry with our, with, with, what our forefathers did and let our standard be the word, how many of you know God has to protect you? Again, you, you, it's okay to ask questions. So you, it wasn't that he was afraid. It wasn't that he did, wasn't a part of team, made a part of culture. But for him, he said, I want to let you know what helped me, what changed my life. Or what was the source of changing my life was knowing Christ. So he said, it was Christ. And I want to present what changed me, Christ. So his standard was what? Christ. So all of our standard in the wave that is coming and the wave that is here, it needs to be at the end of the day, not 
what mama's doing, not what daddy's doing, not what color I am, not how I was treated. What needs to be the standard is God's word. Only can you got to hear that because again, it's gonna, there's going to be things that pull on you. There's something that happens in New Smyrna. I don't know if anybody know about this. It's called a rip current. A rip current is very dangerous. Meaning that if you get caught in a rip current, it can take you out no matter how you fight against it. That's the same with culture. You could get caught up and even not know until afterwards you caught up. That's the danger of culture. That's the danger of not forgiving. That's the danger of not having the standard already set. There has to be a standard. And listen, whoever, I see people saying, yeah, y'all as Christians as have standards because you know they go with you and try. So y'all as have standards and y'all still be falling around here. Listen to me, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Is that right? And uh, we're not talking about being perfect, but we talk about having a standard that we know we must strive to get to. Does that make sense? So make sure that's clear because that's what people can try to pull on you. But y'all just be around here still messing up. Y'all just be around here still failing. So what is y'all standard? Listen, how many of you know you could fail but still know what is right? Amen? You could smoke cigarettes but no, I shouldn't be smoking it. I wish I had somebody in here. You could take a sip and you know, I know I shouldn't be sipping this but you know it's wrong. Is that right? It's because you have a standard. Because you have a what? Standard. So you could have a standard and, and still not follow that standard, but that you know the standard is right. Does that make sense? Please, uh, tonight, your, your last question. Let's go into the word. I think uh, so tonight, when it comes to any election, any voting, find out, please, what do they believe biblically? What have they done biblically? That's right, Monica. That is the standard. Not my best friend. Not my mommy did it this way. Not my daddy did it this way. The standard should be Christ. I'm walking into no church. You ain't got to ask me to join your church if you don't believe in Jesus. How would I do in there? Um, the people nice. But y'all don't believe in Jesus. Uh, my Grammy go there, my aunt go there, my uncle did it. But y'all ain't believe in Jesus. I can't, I love you, Auntie. I love you, Grammy, but I can't follow that because y'all don't believe in Jesus. So the stat, even, even if I walk in, at least you should believe in Jesus right out the door. But if you tell me you believe in Baal, I'd be like, <laughs> anybody see my point? I can't follow you or come to your church if you're telling me you, don't, you believe in Baal. What I do in there? And I come and I see you doing Baal worship and be like, God, do you want me here? Is that something I have to pray about? You saw the door, you don't believe it. You heard me on the door, no Jesus. You heard me the door, see me worshiping Baal. So I ain't got to pray about it. I already see that. How are you praying about something that you already see? The standard is not there. So, but you got to research it. Listen to what people see. Say, see what they're trying to do. See what's coming down and, and where these laws are coming from. And who's setting these laws? And are these laws according to the standard of what I believe? When I was driving and I was also thinking, then you have to also find out what is passionate to you. Like what... Boil it down to you. What matters to you? Does children matter? Do, do, do lies matter like abortion? Is, does, is that an issue for me? Is that an issue? So you have to find out what is my main issue. Is, is, is economics, like finances, does it matter? My money. And, and, and look at what, what really makes you kick. Find out what is a, an important issue. And do research on what is important to you. And find out what... What would find out what people believe according to what is passionate and then what is important to you still line that up with the standard of God's word. Does that make sense? So even with what is important to you, line it up with God's word. Line it up with what? Line it up with God's word. Make sure you hear that. Line it up with what? Line it up with God's word. We could go off all day, but you want to be you want to be in the will of God. And everybody got an opinion. But at the end of the day, you pray and you ask God. But let the word be the fine, like the settle. When you go to court, I wish Stacy was here tonight. I don't know where she is. But when you go to court, one of the ways that she, she said, she, says this, shares this. She said one of the ways that cases are won are by previous laws, how other cases are won. And they write that down in laws. And they use past cases. They say in this article, and this has happened, they use past cases. Cases to win present cases. We got the word of God and the word of God for us should be the final say so. Should be what? You hear that tonight. Hear that tonight. Do not get caught up in what everybody else is doing. We're in trouble. You're in trouble if you do that. 
some of the nicest people I may not be your same color. Whoever said that's right heard me. Some of the nicest people, some of the people who may help you in this life may not be your same color. So you don't want to get caught up in, 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 in color. You don't want to get caught up in, in you, it, you got to think beyond color. If I'm making sense, clap your hand. I go on all day about that. And listen, I wish Pastor Kokov could tell you, and Pastor Eli, if anybody had reason to get offended, and the reason I called them, they were with me. They saw Bishop walk through some of these things. And if anybody had reason to get offended and cut people off and get caught up in culture, it's, the, it's your bishop who's standing before you. And I always guard my heart against it. And God has blessed me because I guard my heart. I never got caught up in it, never got caught up in culture. And let me tell you something, the danger of getting caught up in culture is, is, is when you get caught up with the people, the same people you get caught up with will be the same people who will bring you down. That's just a fact. You won't get caught up in God. You want God to be your protection. Oh, let's go. Mark, Mark chapter 12. I wish somebody hear that. So you want, you, they turn on Jesus. Jesus went before the, the people and the people said, give us Barabbas over Jesus. Jesus did nothing. They chose a robe, robber over Jesus. Give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas. So God will give you what you want. But when you get it, you can't complain about it. Because it's what you want. Is that right, Joe? You came on a good night. Good to see you, Joe. Mark, always good to see you. They tell me how you were going to your daughter's church for a while. Like, Listen, I can support you, but I got to go back to my own church. You tell her right. That news did come to me. Mark chapter 12. If you're there, you can say amen. Let's look now again. It's Tuesday night, don't walk out here. If something comes to you, ask. If it doesn't, we cool. That means you got it. And they sought to lay hold on him, but fed the people. I'm in verse 12 and 12. Are we good? And they sought to lay hold of him, but fed the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. To do what? So before time, people were trying to trap you with what you say. That ain't just happened now. People always look up for something to trap you in. That's why most, people, most churches don't like to talk about politics. Because they know people can try to trap you. But how many of you know people can try to trap you whatever you do? Might as well just say it. And when they were come, they said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man. Is that what they said? For thou regardest not the person of men. But teach us the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tri tribute to who? Caesar. Now, give me your eyes. Who would be Caesar in our day? Like president, like politics, correct? Now, listen, do we all agree with that? So they came. What were they trying to do? They were trying to trap him. Trap him with what? With his word, trap him with politics. Because it was a government, Caesar and, and the government of Rome in that day, they were in charge, so to speak. So they were trying to trap him. Is that right, Odise? Okay, you got to listen good tonight, Bible scholar. Shall we give or, listen to this now. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them. Him knowing their hypocrisy, what that means? Not just knowing their hearts. Y'all got to hear this. He knew that there was a deep, deeper issue. That's, so that's why you have to know when people try to get you caught up in politics, when people try to get you caught up in skin color, when people try to get you caught up in certain debates, you have to know that there's a deeper issue than what is at hand. Do you understand? They may not like the person you go into the church to. They may not like the fact that you may be more blessed than them. People got more, you, people got agendas. They, they may not like the fact that they want somebody in your, they, they want the person in their life. Why are they in your life? We want them over here with us. You understand? They may want to date the person you're dating. They may like, and so they're trying to undermine your relationship. Oh, so you got to know when people come to report to you about someone, why are they reporting? Only Denise got that. Understand that there may be hidden agendas you may not know about. 
So there was a deep issue. Jesus knowing their hearts. You got to discern where people are coming from. You got to discern. It was easy for me not to get caught up in Black Lives Matters. Not because I'm not black. Not because I didn't go through racial issues. I do. I came here and people in this room know Bishop ain't just saying that. It was really happening, y'all. It was really going on. I went to a meeting that I had to speak to an all uh, 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 predominantly white congregation. I was one of the leaders in the background. And in the, meet, in the back, the gentleman said, what are all these black people doing here? And I was like, Lord, I wonder if he recognized I'm black. And that's just some of the issues I've been through. And that's not made up. And I sat that meeting and, and talked. And the anointing fell. I could have get caught up in, I can't believe this. I can't believe they say this to me. I can't, that's the problem. And then I would have missed being with God. And that's how we get. We get caught up and we miss the purposes of God. What if I had gone to a black church, but in the black church, they're still saying, you know what? You're from the Bahamas. We, we don't have nothing to do with you. Which better? I still lose. Because I, I, I'm getting judged because of I'm from the Bahamas and not, may not be American. So you have to let God lead and not get caught up in culture. Only one person heard that. I'm trying to show you, 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 won't, you won't be on God's side. What side you won't be on? You, got, you say that soft, but just the side you won't be on. You won't be on what's popular. You won't be on God's side. Because something was popular today, you don't want to be popular tomorrow. What verse am I on? I, I like this tonight. I, I don't know why. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this more than I probably should. And they, no, no. And so he said, what, what, shall we give or shall we not give? But he knowing their hypocrisy said in them, why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny. Bring me a what? That I may see it. Is that what he said? Jesus was so smart. I loved it. And he said, and they brought it and he said unto them, who is it? image and subscription and they said unto him caesar what they said caesar. biden no no i'm just giving you an example you're all so mad so i say biden so he's saying the president faces on it we know that we're using it synonymous is that right and they brought it and he said unto them who is subscription is on it and they said caesar and he, he jesus answering said unto them render to what caesar. talk to me render to who the things that are and rendered to God and they marveled at him. Is that right? So what he's saying is whatever is expected of Caesar to do what? Respect. Honor Caesar. But whatever is respected of God, do what? Honor God. So he was saying, don't put government aside. Don't say that just matter in politics. Because again, whatever happens in politics, it's trickling down. If they put a red light out, out there and they, we, we are commanded to stop, they say schools must be shut down at 3 o'clock, we have to obey the laws of the land. And if we don't obey the laws of the land, we get locked up. Now, if anybody here think they that bad and want to go break the law, go break some laws. Because you go into jail. You have to obey the laws of the land. There are laws that are set up that we must obey. Correct? So he said to them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar. And render to God the things that are. And they marvel. He was saying, don't, don't run from government. Caesar, pick up the scripture. We're in this world, y'all. Have been preaching to. And because we're in this world, there's certain things we got to obey in this world. Certain things we got to do in this world. Certain things we got to abide by in this world. But again, God is the standard. What is the standard? And as long as you keep God as your standard, you won't have to worry, Bishop, what should I do? And what should I not do? Because you're looking unto God. Render the things that are Caesar's, that are Caesar's, and render to God, which is God. That means if Caesar has a responsibility to protect you and watch over you, guess who else got a responsibility to protect you and watch over you? God. Somebody say God. And not just Caesar will make sure, listen, if you do these things as a citizen of Rome, this is what you could have. God's saying, as a citizen of heaven, this is what you could have. But you got to keep me as your standard. Keep me as your what? Standard. So don't get caught up in culture. And every place I go, every place I travel, I went to Egypt, Jamaica. I went to different, uh, uh, Trinidad. When I travel... Most times when I travel, this is what everyone says from the pulpit to the door. They always say to me, you don't understand our culture. And I'm thinking, you may be right, I am not Egyptian. But that's why Christ came. He came to change the culture. You don't just say, man, I'm telling you, 
If you say an amen, amen, imagine me going into a community having to preach. Now you're making me come down. And the, I, the, the person who invited me to Egypt, I'll give you an example. When I went to Egypt, I was led to take up an offering. And I called the pastor up. Not for me, because God gives you wisdom. I don't know how this church they would handle Egypt. I'm giving you an example. This was different. I was bringing kingdom to the culture, or trying to bring. I brought the pastor up my first service. This was Reese. This was last year. When I brought the pastor up and, start, and people, I laid the first offering, and people started coming. I made a call. The head pastor over everything who invited us, he almost had a panic attack. True, Miss Carolyn. He started looking like, oh my God, what is he doing? He started, I see him like almost like sweating. He couldn't get to me fast enough after the service. He said, we don't do that here. And, but he took me in the office. Guess who else he took me in the office with? Monica, he took me with the pastor over the church that I raised it off. He said, pastor, I've been trying. He said to him, the one who's telling me, he said, I've been trying to teach the people how to give a long time ago. He did nothing wrong. He said, I've been, he said, I was hoping someone would do this. And I didn't have to open my mouth and I kept looking at him. But I, I started to be able to say, do you hear what he said? But how many of you know pride? You see what I'm saying? And because of a lack of wanting to change culture, he could not accept it. Even though one of his pastors was saying how blessed he was getting from it. And he wanted it to happen. So people have a tendency to stay stuck in culture and they choose culture over kingdom or whoever I'm talking to tonight as Christians we're never supposed to put our culture before kingdom it, only Monica Monica sit in the front you're never supposed to put your skin color before kingdom you're never supposed to be Haitian first Jamaican first Trinidadian first and every place I traveled I say God I say I see why it's so hard for people to change because they're so caught up in, I'm Jamaican, I'm Bohemian, uh, you don't understand us. You're not supposed to be worried about going to a place to understand us. Christ didn't come to understand us. He came for us to understand him. <laughs> Does that make sense? But they were so busy, I love how you're listening. They were so busy just thinking culture that they didn't understand God was trying to bring kingdom. So it kept them caught up in poverty. It kept them from being free to be able to bless their pastor because they didn't understand if their pastor is blessed, they would be blessed. And I was trying to teach them the order of God. But because they were so used to doing things traditionally, I'll tell you, I even went to one of the churches, y'all, in Egypt. In where? Egypt. They are so bound with culture. You got women sitting on one side and men sitting on one side. I'm telling you, today. To where? Another thing was I had Takeda sitting in the pulpit and Takeda crossed her leg. One of the men said, in this culture, we don't cross legs. Ladies do not cross their legs in culture, in that culture. So guess, but guess what, y'all need your eyes. Guess what Takeda had to do? She had to uncross her leg because when you're in Rome, you got to do what? You have to do as the Romans do. But she had to uncross her leg sitting in the, in, the, in the pulpit. Because we had to understand we were in a different culture. So, and then I had to, uh, certain things I had to do, I had to taper and I had to teach them. And I had to ask if it was okay. Am I making sense to anybody in here? And, and sort of spoon feed them. But when you're stuck in culture above kingdom, you miss God. We want to be a church that's never caught up in culture or above kingdom make sense very good we don't want to be a church that get caught up in color above kingdom anybody should be able to walk in here only morning let me say it again anybody should be walking here no matter their color no matter their background anybody should be welcome because I'm of you know that's the way the kingdom works if you believe that clap your hand and give God a praise yeah so I say that's the way the kingdom works so we need to understand Jump Ministries. In the season that we're coming in, we're going into a wave. What are we going into? And the wave has already started. But what is the standard to know what wave to ride is how is this wave holding true to the word? 
Does that make sense? Study the candidates. Study what Biden believes. Am I right? Oh, you all ain't talking to me. Study what Trump believes. Don't just say, I'm going to vote for Trump. Study what he believes. Study what they have done biblically. Oh, Monica. I'm so glad. How long has Biden been in office? Not four years. Three and a half years. It'll be, I think it'll be four years around November, January. Four years. But right now, it's three and a half years. Was Trump in office? Was he in office? So do you have a chance to go back and look biblically what has been done biblically? So go back and do your research. What has Biden done biblically? Monica, Monica, you can't say nothing. You gotta. And then you got to go and look at what Trump has done biblically. What, what, what is done? Biblically. Not who's white and who's black. Oh, Trump Ministries. Does that make sense? Yeah. What they have done, what? And then when you make, if you were to vote, what you can vote on? Bib, that's only Monica. You have the vote on who has come closest what? So if one, if both have done biblical things, you want to look who has come closest to biblical standards. Make sense? And should it be a question who to vote for if someone comes closest? Why? Because he lines up with God's standards. What y'all saying is right. So you ain't got to, not what mama said, not what we have been taught, but what does, who lines up most with biblical standards? Does that make sense? Now, can biblical, can someone line up with biblical standards and change their mind? Who somebody that, these are the questions you should ask. Can someone line up with biblical standards and change their mind? Yes, they can. But what God honors is, what God will protect us in is when we went in, we didn't go in voting because of color. We didn't go voting in what was popular. We went voting saying, God, we put this in your hand first. So that's God's responsibility to take care of them. Oh, you got to hear that. Does that make sense? Because you know when you voted or whatever you put, you went according to what God's standard was. So whatever they do beyond that, that is not your responsibility. That is God's responsibility because you're motiv you were motivated by God's standard being your guide. So who's responsible to protect you? Oh, man. Who's responsible to protect you? Who's responsible to make sure you're straight? God. So we got to guard our hearts again because we are living in a time where there's a wave. Where the, if you're Christian, if, you're, if, if, you, if you don't believe what we believe, you are not for us. This ain't whether we are for you. This is whether we're for God. Uh, and then he say amen, but I want you to hear this. And, but God is not popular. So being, not on, being on God's side ain't just like God. That means you could be cast out. That means they could come after you. That means you become a target if you don't believe what we believe. So, you know, it ain't just only Monica hearing me tonight. It's not just saying I am God or I'm for God. You need to know not going along with certain agenda means. They would start, what did they say to Jonathan? You're a coon. Is, how could you, uh, somebody say, uh, uh, do you believe black lives matter? Is that even a question? He's black. I am black. How could I not believe a black life matter? But for them, they don't understand it. So when people don't understand you, they put their own label on you. You got it. You're like, oh, Lord, open the ear. So they'll begin to call you a coon. You, don't, you, 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 you a traitor. You're not a part of us. But you're not a, it's not that I'm a traitor. I am going for biblical standard. So the reason I stand was not that black lives don't matter. I'm black. I know the black had tra tra tragedies and things that have happened in the culture. But I believe that what heals the ills of our society, only Jesus could heal the ills of our society. That's why he stood. Oh, y'all should be clapping, man. Lord, open every ear. So it's not a, so Bishop is saying tonight, we have to be, to say, God, you set the standard. God, you show me when I go into the, the vote. And everybody in here wants to vote. If you're 18 and you're allowed to vote, you want to make sure you vote. In this season, you want to make sure you vote. You want to go in there in the wisdom of God. You, and before you vote, you want to do your study. Don't just vote because somebody else told you. 
Do your study. Find out. Go back. We, we are ready. And the good thing about presidents being in office is you have four years to evaluate them. How did they keep my standard? The good thing in Trump running again is to know what, what did he do biblically? Go and do it. And if you see things that has done biblically versus things that are not biblical, that's not even a question. Man, Lord, open every ear. That should, that should be your answer on how I move. I can't move because it's popular. I got to move because what God wants me to move. Black Lives was a popular movement. We hear nothing about Black Lives no more. And we've also heard that the people who were in charge of Black Lives took all the money and gone with it. But everybody was into Black Lives, Black Power, this Black T-shirts. With Who had the money? Where the money gone? But it was a big movement. Everybody was in black power, black power, black this and black that. And they can't find them. All the money gone. They had to go to court. They couldn't find the money. People got sued over money they spent because people got, am I making sense to anybody here? They got caught up in the wave. We want to make sure tonight we render to God the things that are God. God, who do you want? Show me what to do. And whoever is elected, say whoever is elected. We cover and we pray for and we say, God, help us to honor who is in authority. Clap your hand and give God a praise for that. <laughs> but again, somebody say, but again, again. we want to exercise our voice. So you don't want none of these issues to come up in November and you'd be like, man, I didn't know. Because listen, whether you know or not, it still affects you. You got to get judged for what you know and then uh, what you didn't know, you got to still get judged for. The police can't pull me over when I drive in 80 miles an hour as I didn't know. If I drive in 80 and the speed limit say 50 and I see, say, did you see it? Well, I didn't know. Am I still getting a ticket? Because he can say, why didn't you know? You're responsible for the knowledge you got. So can we research? And oh, we live in a, and yes, Jeff, we live in a generation too. We could say Syria, any kind of thing. Right? You ain't even got to go research. Just pick your phone up. Ask Siri. <laughs> uh, Siri will answer all your questions. So you can pick your phone up. You could Google search things. So it's at our fingertips to find knowledge. So if anybody don't know, guess what? They don't want to know. Because it's at your fingertip to find out. And if you research it, even if you don't know, you could ask questions. What does this mean? You can go to people and ask them questions. But, uh, but you want to be able to do your research. You want to be able, especially in these times, you want to be able to exercise your voice. And you want to be able not to get caught up in culture. Don't, I'm telling you, y'all, I've traveled, and all my travels, every pastor to the door, everything is culture. You don't know how we run things. I don't ever go in trying to change things. All I'm trying to do is bring, cult, bring kingdom. All I'm trying to do is bring kingdom. And every culture I've been in is being difficult to bring kingdom because they're so tied to culture. And I'm saying to you tonight, don't get caught up in culture. Don't get caught up in I'm Puerto Rican. Don't get caught up in I'm Trinidad. Of course, you should be proud of where you're from. Be matured in hearing me. Of course, you should be proud to be a human, proud to be an American, all of that. But when you come to Christ, it's the Christ standard first before American. Because American can't put you in hell or heaven. Boy, I wish I had somebody real in here. Bahamas can't put me in hell or heaven. Say amen. amen. And when you when the rubber really meet the road, it ain't the government that's providing. It's God that provided. Oh, somebody ought to clap their hand. God never provided for nobody in this room. Somebody say, God, thank you for your provision. Let's bring a mic tonight. Let's bring a mic tonight. And the reason why I'm saying this is I believe this is going to be one of the most crucial elections we've ever had. I believe this is going to be one of the most crucial. And listen to y'all, anybody who think I'm just talking, COVID broke out the, the year of election. Go and do your research. The year they had election is when COVID broke out. That's when that disease came from China. That was election year for America. So when you look at the pattern, you, can, you know what you should be asking yourself? What's going to break out this year? That was, Lord, that was, we never had no pandemic. The election year was when that pandemic came. We're about to curb into November. So whether you like it or not, you even got to ask. You, I even got to prophesy to you. You just got to say, God, whatever's coming, protect us because something's coming. Lord. Anybody understand what I'm saying tonight? Say, prove it, Bishop. The president just almost got shot in our lifetime while he was on TV and opened by a 20-year-old. 
That shows you the, the spirit that's in the atmosphere. That's not just the president getting shot with a bullet. There's a spirit in the atmosphere. So that shows you if the wave is coming for what kind of year we're going to have. We're going to have a year. So ready or not, it is here. Not even here it comes. It's here. It's what? And I can tell you, the closer it gets to November, we can see more things happen. The closer it gets to November, the more we are going to see happen. The closer it gets. I'm not sure of this, and somebody could Google this. I think George Floyd even got killed in the election year. I say Google it. I don't just shake it. I think that was an election year. Make sure I ain't just making that up. So somebody who got their sees, uh, Siri, check it real quick. I think that was even in an election year when George Floyd got killed. So you could only imagine what's coming. And let me tell you what's going to be a major. Y'all want? I might as well finish. I know it's on TV. Let me tell you what's going to be a major issue this year: race. Y'all need to get race can be a major issue. There's coming something down the line to divide us. Race. The whole church goes quiet. I can say it again. This can be a year where race will be highlighted like never before. So y'all thought it was Black Lives Matter was rough? Watch what's coming this year. Race is going to be a major issue. We have to be ready for what's coming. And if we're not, the only way you get destroyed if, if God prepares us, but we got to hear the word so we can prepare before it comes. And we can look at time past what has happened to know. I'm not prophesying. People are like, oh, I ain't got to prophesy. You could just look at the seasons and tell what time it is. You could look at things happening. You could look in times past. And tell, anybody looked it up when, when George Floyd died, the year? Yeah. It was election year. Yeah. That was an election year. That was, for, thank you very, hello. So your bishop ain't making stuff up. So I'm telling, I'm telling you before November curb in here, we better buckle up and get right. Because it's on. It's on and popping. We haven't seen anything yet. So we have to know we are on key with God. We have to know that we're not getting caught up in a wave. And again, you have to know that, Bishop, help me. I got to discern right. I got to do my research. So when I'm moving, because it's crucial. It's what? And let me say this too. This is, this is, this is Duran. Who does this? Uh, who does this? This is not Dr. Hebron, this ain't Bishop, and this ain't Doctor. Everything that is happening in the world, the end game is the church. You mark that somewhere in your Bible, mark that somewhere where you put it, don't ever forget it. Remember, I said it here. The end game is believers. Oh, Lord. The end game is believers. Anybody that confessed, remember I said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Anyone that confessed Jesus Christ is Lord, the end game is you and me. <laughs> Listen, that's a whole nother sermon. So you better get that in your spirit. So what you think you dodging, any bullets you think come, you better be like, God, in this season, protect us. In this season, keep us. In this season, guide us. Because we're living in crucial times. In what kind of times? And it's always been crucial. Guess what? It's about to get more crucial. So if you thought it was crucial before, you better buckle up. It's going to get worse. So now I'm going to open anybody that anything that I said, anything you want to add, you want to come. I want you, I want you to ask yourself too when you come, why do you vote? When you're voting, what is your purpose in voting? When you vote, do you just vote to vote? Do you, why do you vote? Like, what, what is in your mind? What is the, the standard for your voting? Have you even ever heard anybody say this to you before? But having a standard. And as believers, our standard should always be Christ. Doesn't mean that we don't fall short. You got to hear that. None of us in here perfect. We can fall short. But when we get back up, we know the standard is Christ. What's the standard? That's the end of the day, not your color. And I'm telling you, you will be surprised how many churches and people get caught up in color. All it matters is that you're black. All it matters is you're white. White is the card. If you're white, you get in. If you're black, you get in. If you ain't our color, you don't get in. How many of you know if I'm God color, God can get me in? You got to hear that. But people, it's so easy to clap to this, Lord. I, wish, I hope you all could hear me. If you move by color, y'all, and getting in clicks and joining things because of color, you, that means you trust in men above God. And the men you trust, the same people who put you in the seat is the same people who could take you down. If God puts you in the seat, nobody could take you down because he got to fight for you. 
Lord, I pray you open every ear in this room tonight. I want, I'd rather God fight for me than man fight for me. So get caught up in God. What are you saying? Not color, not religion, not culture, not what? Culture. I'll say it again. Not what? Culture. And every society I have preached in, every one, my fight has been culture, not kingdom. When I say fight, I ain't talking about throwing blows. I'm talking about just, it was so hard to introduce kingdom. And, and, and all Christ did was come to bring kingdom. That was his whole purpose. God, he said, Lord, let your kingdom come. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. His whole purpose on earth was to bring the kingdom. And they couldn't understand kingdom. They were too caught up in culture. That's why they miss it, missed the Messiah. They still were looking for the Messiah when the Messiah came. They didn't know the Messiah had already come, died for them. And the Jews today are still waiting on the Messiah to come when he's already came. Why? Because they were more caught up in culture and religion, whoever that's for. Culture and religion kept them from receiving Jesus as Messiah. We have to know. Even that research. Look at what. So know the times that we're in. Know. The Bible says, Jesus, they said, Jesus, when you will return. I don't know why I'm going here but I might as well write. Jesus said to them, he said, he said, Matthew 24, he said, look at the fig tree. The fig tree was how they would tell the weather. He said, you look at its branches and you know that summer is nigh. He said, you can tell by the fig tree. He said, when you see wars and rumors of wars and these things be that begin to happen, know that I'm near, even at your heart's door. So what he was telling them was pay attention to the signs. We have to pay attention to the things around us so we know what time we're living in. We won't be caught off guard. Pay attention. We know what happened in the last election. That mean, and now we're in another election year. We got to pay what's coming. So it shouldn't be like, oh, I'm surprised. Be like, oh, my God, prepare us for this year. I'm prophesying. All I'm doing is telling you I'm using what happened in time. We could build on Jesus. Any questions? If you're like, don't go there tonight. And, and, yeah, you could, yes, you could say something. Anybody could say something and add. And please... What I'm saying tonight is going to be debate. Debate, y'all better get ready. Y'all can watch plenty of debates. Y'all got plenty of people who have opinion. Where your pastor from? He from the Bahamas. He don't know what he's been through in America. <laughs> he don't know he only been, how old he is. He young. He don't know what we've been through in this culture. Oh, no. We, black people, y'all think we don't know. Bahamans too had to go. We, we, we came from Africa on boats. In the, in the islands. So a lot of people from the islands came from Africa. And we, some of us, and Ibo Koseta, Odis could help me with this. Come, Odis. I think even in the Bahamas, downtown, blacks were not even to go down, was not able to go to, in our own country to go downtown at a certain time. At 6 o'clock, we had to be inside. Give him the mic. Give him the mic, Monica. You can stay with it. Say, that, say it, Odis. That was up until 1967. So people think because you're in the island and not from the Bahamas, you don't know but race. We know more than you think we know. Go ahead, Monica. Stay up here, too. If you want to say something, too, add. Because I forgot 6 o'clock rule. Um, I wanted to speak on the Biden Very good. presidency. So when he first ran, I had a lot of family members mad at me because I was like, I was, I was still up north, and I said, I'm not voting for Biden. And they were like, why? He's for the, the people and the government programs and all of this stuff. I said, but he don't have no biblical standards of God. Very mature. And it's not like I was going to church because I backslid. But I still knew the standards of God. And That's what, what I, but I said that tonight. Yeah, you yeah, did. I said that. I said, you could still drink, but you know the truth. Yes. And <laughs> Very good. When Black Lives Matter happened and everybody was protesting and all everybody was arguing, debating. I said, everybody keep rowing this Black Lives Matter, but Christ's life matters. That's right. Christ's life That's matters. That's very good, Monica. So very good. when they was running, I said, it's a setup. That's I right. told my family, I said, listen, something's going to happen to Biden, but I thought it was going to be before now, to where he's going to have to step down and it's going to put Kamala in place and culture, the black people, are going to go for her just like they did Obama because everybody want to see a black president yeah. in place, you know, but they're not looking. Obama didn't do anything. And we won't get into all I know, that. I'm just saying. You, you try that, but what you're saying, but I understand. What you're saying, don't, you're saying don't go by. It's just, it don't go by. Make sure do your research. Yes. Yeah. Very because good. a lot of stuff that they are placing in Lords is everything that is against what God stands for. And that's your standard. Y'all have the, and don't, don't just, and Monica's strong. She speaks strong. She's from Jersey. She could fight. But share your opinion, because then your opinion may help. 
it may help understand, it may help us understand thinking. And we may understand. So don't be afraid to ask questions. And, and the reason why you want to do this is because outside of this church, people are going to ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you in force? You don't think that's what they say to Jonathan, you're a coon. You ain't no coon, you're a Christian. And Christ is my standard. Make sense? So nobody in the room be afraid to ask. Ask because, and let me say this, Paul, a lot of people don't talk to you when you're on one side or the other, you know. They start getting mad at you. People lose, friendships are lost. Some family members start getting divided over uh, uh, politics. Oh, can I say something? Yeah, you can. Uh, I'm not telling you how to vote or what. But do we, I want to confirm why the end game is the church. Because what a lot, a lot of us forgot when America was founded, it was founded on the Democratic Republic. You're not just a democratic country. You're a democratic republic. That's what the, for, the founders' fathers made sure put down in the Constitution. Because the, in the, where they came from in England, it was democratic, the monarchy. Whatever they said, that was it. But they made sure put democratic republic. That means you don't just vote, but the people you vote for go ahead of you to speak for those who weren't heard in, in the voting process. That means the majority won, but the minority party that did not get the seat still could come and speak. But in a democratic country, it's the majority. That's it. So that's when you hear, like on the news, when they say Trump is a threat to the demo democracy, you have to be careful with the words they're using. Because when you use this democratic, that could also creep back to presenting socialism to you and communism to you in a very light, subtle way. Because what happens is all those countries you see that are socialist or communist started out as democratic. But when the majority... Everybody won, understand that? Make they, sure, you, again, you can ask questions. When the majority won, they shut down the country's constitution, but in America you can't do that because of the, the republic. So if we're not careful, we, if we're not careful and wise and, and ask God how to move in this season, we can become a society if we're not careful, if we're not what? Careful. Where the government will tell us what to do and we have yes. no voice. Does that make sense? Is that what you're saying, Odis? Yeah. To further give a biblical base to what Bishop is teaching, you can look in Isaiah 44. God will use an unrighteous man to benefit his people. And, the, and, that, and that scripture from Isaiah 44, 23, and the Isaiah 45, it talks about how God used Cyrus, an unrighteous king, an unrighteous man, to benefit his people. Very good. So there's a biblical basis for what Bishop is teaching. Maybe one night you the need to scripture maybe, reference. Maybe you need to do a teaching on that soon, like on Cyrus and how God used Cyrus. So that's so do a study on it, do a teaching and prepare to teach it on choose on a Tuesday night. So tell me when you're ready. A yes. good study. I will. Somebody else have a question. Please stand the people at home watching. Again, hey, let me say this too. If you're at home and you ain't trying to kill us. <laughs> You really want to ask a legitimate question, you can call, and we will say the question over, over the mic. If you're at home, Shadrach, and you want to make sure you get it, you want to ask a legit, now Shadrach, do you know somebody may be out there trying to send, trying to do something to us? Those questions don't come out. Someone that has a legitimate question and wants an answer from us based on what I said and what you heard tonight, you can send your question and we'll be glad to answer. Um, how y'all doing, everybody? Good, good. Um, I didn't really have a question, but I'm more so just kind of wanting to emphasize what was already said. Um, I definitely resonate with you, Monica. Um, just a little bit about me. Like, I come from a background of two Marines. So. Take your time. Of, of two Marines? <laughs> two Marines. What that means? Your mother and. I don't understand what that means. So, like, my mom was a Marine, my dad was a Marine. Oh, wow. So, 
you know, Marines. You got yeah. people in the military. Okay, you know, got it. Years. Yeah. So I remember having a conversation with a family member, and they were asking me who I was going to vote for. And at the time, like Monica, I was just kind of like, mm, I don't want to get involved. I'm not voting just yeah. because I didn't really feel like my voice mattered. So honest. And I love it. Keep going. <laughs> so that's, what, that's what most people think. Yeah, and, and say, very true. For sure. And I think a lot of us feel that way and just look at our society. Everything that's going on right now makes us feel powerless. Yeah. But in reality, it has to do with a lot of lack of knowledge. But very good. I'm going to get to that in a second. Very good. So when I would have this conversation with the family member. You're doing good. Take your time. <laughs> You're doing good. My response would be, okay, do you like bleach or poison? So this was years ago, right? And... Do you like bleach? It may help me. That may be one I got to use. <laughs> Keep going. We know what they can both do. So um, the thing is, when I said this, it would cause a lot of negative reaction. And the first thing that would get told to me was our ancestors fought for this right, which is absolutely true. I respect my elders by all means, but I also do a lot of research. So my problem is when I would talk to this family member, their reasons, like Bishop said, would not really be valid on who I should vote for. And just being honest, especially with my culture, being black, you know, we do try to lean towards our people. Sure. But we don't realize that sometimes our own people ain't always for us. That's right. You say that? Right. Now, <laughs> piggybacking off of ODs. <laughs> so true. I, I, okay, so I'm trying to not go off on too many tangents. You're but doing good. You're like good. Bishop said, it's so important to not get caught up in aesthetics That's and right. culture because That's we don't right. even realize so many things change over time so as well. Right. And like OD said, if we're talking even, what, 200 years ago, the popular vote for blacks specifically was Republican. And a lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in a more free society where we live in a lot of truths, people don't understand now it's becoming more popular to be Democrat. Now, a lot of us, like he said, it's gonna start to become a race issue. And now with Biden dropping, Kamala running, not only is she black, but she's a female. It's gonna be a time of a lot of division. And I think we really now more than ever need to get more knowledgeable. Sure. And we need to draw closer to God because we don't understand it's gonna be so easy to get influenced by everything around us. That's the that's the that's the tide, that's the wave. If you don't see God and ask God for direction on which way to go, we could get caught up in a wave in emotions and miss God. And that's what we gotta be careful of. Absolutely. Um so good. So with me, um, even myself, I'm trying to get more, because, again, I was one of those people. I don't want to get involved, you know, just because I feel like it doesn't matter. But in reality, it does, and especially with sure younger does. people, too. Sure does. Let's do more of our research. A lot of people now who have power are of an older generation, but they know more. Why don't we think it's cool to know more as a younger people and a younger population? We need to understand we're going to be the next influence of that wave. Absolutely. So we need to really take charge and assert our power and make it popular to really just be more spiritual when we're choosing our leaders for sure, the future. Sure. Have to. So. Have to. Very good. Y'all clap your hand. Give God a praise. Yeah, well said. Well said, young lady. Anybody can ask or come tonight, y'all. Listen, whatever you side of the wall on, we love you. Jesus rules in jail. <laughs> um, good night, everyone. Um, one thing I want to share why it's so important, spiritually, why Bishop say you want to vote for someone that's got closest, the closest to biblical principles, because and why he teach this, um, a lot of people don't understand and he's been preaching on authority. But the president represents the authority for the nation. That's right. The president is like the door. Like, Bishop is this authority. Whatever Bishop allow in this church, he's the authority of this church. So when we choose a president, whatever we pick, if we pick a president that's 
don't want to have nothing to do with God. He want different laws. When we pick him, we invite and like Bishop say, we don't we don't war against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So when we choose a president well that said, don't want well, God, well it opens the door to the nation for demons to come in, principalities, lawless stuff. It's like we welcoming it. it we it's an invitation. So when we pick somebody that's closer to biblical things, believe in prayer, believe in the things that we believe in, we telling God, God, we want this nation to line up with your that's will. That's right, that's right. So Very that's well why said. this the, that's the, the meat of the whole well why said. we want the right president, because we want God's will to be done. That's right, well said. Amen. Well said. Come on, y'all, clap your hands. Well said, Plummer. Well said. <laughs> Come, Rosie. Well said. Y'all come, come, come. Come on up, Rosie. Okay. All right. Good evening. So um, what's interesting was I was just in the book of Daniels, and I was reading the prophecies of uh, it, and mm -hmm. when it was explained in the story of Nebuchadnezzar, and he was having these dreams of, um, I don't even know what to call it that he was dreaming about, but I, I remember as a child being explained that that was the different kingdoms of the earth. Right. And that the, um, the feet, which was made out of iron and clay, would be America. Right. And so if you read the prophecy, it, it explains how a stone comes, hit it, destroy it. And so I guess my question is, and that's where my... Um, laxation for the lack of words mm -hmm. come from is because you know that it's coming to an end yeah and so it's almost like well god your will is gonna is gonna happen you know what i mean like how do i play a part in something that's already predestined it almost but what you're saying i understand completely what you're saying and it's well said we got what well, you're saying what's going to happen is going to happen god's will is going to be done and it's going to end but it almost seems like satan has put his feet on the gas like he's trying to speed it up what we can pray for is that god will allow mercy over judgment that we could we could hold back the judgment until we can't hold it back anymore but we could hold it back as long as we can to give us more time more people to get saved more people to get in the ark that god will hold it back Okay. It seemed like he put his brakes, feet, feet on the gas. Like things are speeding up. But it's coming. But it's coming. It's coming. We won't pray that it doesn't come before it needs to come. Right, because I got to get all the way. <laughs> <laughs> come on, God. So my yeah, second yeah. question is... Wait, wait, wait. Take oh, your time. Go okay. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So kind of coming off of your message on Sunday, which uh, my father, would, <laughs> he was so uh, enthused by it because I grew up in a house with my father. I understand, you know, the process of having that male structure. And I guess that's what I combated with as a teen. I mean, <laughs> but at the same time, um, what she was saying is what's in my spirit now. Well, God, and I mean, I guess God has already answered it to me. It's almost like, well, how can a woman, because we deal with so many emotions, run a country, but then that would be somebody saying, "Well, how can somebody be a woman pastor?" And I am so for right, women right, pastors. Sure, sure. So I don't know. A woman, a woman can lead. Nobody make no mistake. A woman can lead. Deborah led. Deborah led. We have women in the word. A woman was the first one to carry the word. <laughs> a woman was the first one to carry the word. A woman could lead. We just want, we want to make sure that it's a godly woman that leads. That comes closest to godly values. Not just, that's very key, it's good that you, not just because she's a woman. Does that make sense? No, don't just say, make sure you hear that. And with, because the world doesn't think like the church, as long as she's a woman, that's what trumps the word. Nothing should trump the word. Does that make sense? Nothing. That's what I'm trying to get you, get you to hear. If you understand that, y'all, we got it. The standard is the word. The standard is in black, the standard is in white, the standard is in woman, the standard is in I like you, this is how I go. The standard is the word. Make sense? That's the standard. That's why I started out saying that. This is something uh, you had said, why we should still take part even though when it's the end. But biblically, going back to biblical scriptures, uh, when Jeremiah was the prophet at the time, he was prophesying that they would be taken over by King Nebuchadnezzar. 
what happened is the people that did nothing end up in captivity. But the people that followed Jeremiah end up not in captivity. They end up in freedom in Egypt. Wow. So that's what Bishop is saying. Very good. That's confirming biblically and what today, how by us not getting caught up in the wave. God will always protect us. us. Well said, Odis. That was good. That was well said. I like that. Come on, clap your hand. That was good. Very good. Anybody else? Remember that there's no bad questions, no bad questions, no bad questions. People are watching. I saw Shadrach come out the room. Did Shadrach, somebody have a question, Shadrach? Watching? I saw you come out the room. I don't know if you come to. That's the first time he came out the room. He came out the room at the time when I called for questions to give you a battery. Stand for me. So good to see you again. Hello. Good. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Jessica. So my question is a bit mixed question. Okay. But um, since we're talking about elections and voting and everything, I've always kind of identified myself as more of like an independent. Right. Because there are, you know, certain ideologies that the right side might have that I might not agree with 100%. Sure. And the same goes for the left side. There's sure. some stuff I might not agree with 100%. So when it comes to this current election, you know, I'm hearing a little bit of everything, but what would you normally, what would you say in terms of, yes, there could be a candidate that can present themselves to identify with Christian values. Right, hold it right there, hold it. You're doing good. Don't lose your thought. What I said, don't lose don't your lose thought. My thought. The, what I also said was not just identify, but they have a track record. Right. So what you can do with both parties is look at past track records and see which one came closest, not just by what they said. We have something to see what they have done. Right. You, fought, you, you, you got that? Okay, okay. go on. Right. Going. So looking back at the track record, uh -huh. right, with the same individual that can present themselves to be more Christian ideologies and their track record might not be, you know, spick and spam, but I did hear the minister here talk about Cyrus, was it? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Cyrus, right, Pastor Kokoroff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can go that route, but we can also look a little bit forward where we can hear a candidate some, you know, endorse something like Project 25. Sure. Where we can say, yeah, race is not an issue here or shouldn't be considered in our voting or right. included as a factor. But let's say things like, a da your daughter or son going to college and them receiving a scholarship as a merit based or whatever that is, is now taken away from them right. because of this policy that this person who also identifies to have Christian ideologies right. is now removing. Right. So, so what, is, what is key with that is if you look, if they ch now remove it and you look at it, and, but that's what you remember when I said, if you move by, God, I chose them based on biblical values, then that's where God comes in and still protects you anyway. Because you will move by his word above the person. Right. Do you understand? See, what we're moving by is not Republican or Democrat. Right. What we're being moved by is his word. So if somebody, if somebody came and we were moved by God's word, but they decide to change their mind, it's then it's God's responsibility to protect us because we were moving by his word. So God will ultimately protect you because the bottom line is his word. Right. Um, but what if Does that make word, sense to anybody? Yes. Make sure you hear that. What I said that, not to cut your fully thought, I said that too in regards to relationship. Anybody remember when I said how I was dating the young lady and one pastor told me, yay, she's not the one, but, and I listened, even though I felt what I felt, God still protected me and would have protected me because my bottom line was, God, I'm honoring your word. Does that make sense? Right. I Always agree. remember, we're just, un all we are are under shepherds. All, people, all we do is make, but God has to still protect us because we're trying to honor him. Got it. He's ultimately in control. No man is in control. God's in control. Amen. Keep going, though. You're doing good. Um, yeah, that was pretty much my, my confusion yeah. there because... People could, always make, people could always do wrong. But God, right. when they do wrong, God even, God, if Odis led me wrong, turn around, Odis led me wrong, I'm following him, but I'm following him based on the word. Go, go straight. I'm following him based on the word. God knew what Odis was going to do down the road. I don't know.
but down the road, you better believe God got protection for me. So when Odise mess up, God gonna make sure I'm all right. Because I never followed him for him. I followed him because of the word he had in him. Right. Does that make sense? Right. So God will always protect me. Right. Okay. You got that? Everybody in the room got that? Yes. So no, if Odis following the word, he's telling me what he's telling me, I'm bearing witness to. It is the word. I'm bearing witness and I'm following him. God, because God is a God that knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end, God knew what Odis is going to do. But, and God knows I'm following him because of his word. God will always protect me. He's the, he's the chief shepherd. I'm the under shepherd. You understand? God loves you more than I could ever love you. Make sense? And God will always look over his people. Always. Without a doubt. That's what you have to know. You may not have me, but God got me. Make sense? Anybody else? Pastor Coco, if I know where you're going back in the back, well, you, you, you did so good, spoke so good, but Cyrus should have stayed in the front. You got us thinking. Anybody else have any questions? Tonight, and let me just say, most people don't talk like this that we're talking in church tonight. People don't want to touch it. But I feel like it must be touched. Say, why must it be touched? Because of the time that we're in. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So much is happening. Yes, Lord, I just give God glory, hallelujah, because we need to know, hallelujah. Yeah, we do. And the fact that I feel so sorry for the young people I voting, and they say, uh, why well, I vote because it's going to go their way, go the Republican way or the Democrat way. And they are looking at their culture, and they're looking at they uh, the Republican and Democrat. And I pray that, that they don't they don't vote because they want to follow the uh, the uh, what they call it the um, the popularity of yeah. what they like to follow, and uh, they give the popularity the number one vote instead of what God say. That's right. And I give God glory, Hallelujah, for His word, Hallelujah, that He's gonna. Uh, Go by the standard, hallelujah. His standard, hallelujah. And uh, I thank God for that. Amen. And I pray that they go by God's standard and not the popularity standard. Amen. And that's all I want to say. Amen. <laughs> y'all clap your hand, clap your hand, clap your hand. Come on, y'all. Let's clap our hand and give Jesus a praise tonight. I know tonight was a little different, y'all, and I intended it to be different, I, but I wanted to. I've never done this before. This, I think, uh, uh, never. This is a first I've ever went in this direction, but I feel like it's going to be such a crucial year, uh, and it's already shaping up to be that way, Joe. I think we have to put a lot of prayer down, continue to pray and ask God for direction, and to give us the grace to stay protected in this season. Amen? There's a scripture in the Bible where it says God never destroys the righteous with the wicked. He always, only Miss Carolyn heard that, God always protects his people. He never destroys the righteous with the wicked. He always protects his people. Let's clap our hand and give God a praise for that. Shadrach, I can't believe nobody asked questions. You must even have this camera on. Let's bow our heads. Father, we cover the service tonight we ask God in this season that you will direct us we pray for this election we ask God that your perfect will be done we ask that you will forgive us as a nation for where we failed you where we've strayed away from you where we've opened doors father forgive us come on keep your eyes closed Lord we repent tonight for not being the representatives the way we should, and the light, the salt. Have mercy on us, God. Don't take your Holy Spirit from us. Keep your hands on America, Lord Jesus. Lord, let righteousness rule this nation. We pray for President Biden and for his remainder time in office, God, and we pray for Kamala Harris. We pray that you give her wisdom and knowledge and understanding we pray for Donald Trump. 
We pray for the person that he is called to be his running mate. That you strengthen them and let your hands be in this election. Father, we ask that you be Lord of America. In the name of Jesus. Be Lord of every church in America. In the name of Jesus. God, forgive us for where we've turned to idols. Forgive us where we've served Baal. Come on, y'all, keep your eyes closed. We repent of that, God. Forgive us for the murders, the rapes, the abortions, the God, the things we've allowed. We have allowed and become numb to God. Forgive us for our falsehoods, for not lifting up your holy name. God, we humble ourselves and we repent tonight. We repent on behalf of the sins of America. Racism. We remember that family, that the young lady that was shot. We ask God that you will cover the police force all over America. Father, the, the spirit of violence that will try to come to these streets. The rage, God, that you will, as a church, help us to love our enemies. Oh, come on, church. God, we're not worried about these seasons. Thank you for letting us live to see this time. Because you said the darker it gets, God, the brighter it will become. And thank you for the light, being the light of the world. Thank you for letting us live in this generation, God, where we could represent you. Come on, lift your hands, y'all. He's listening. So, Lord, tonight, as people in this room don't know which way to go, which way to vote, that tonight, God, show us what to do. Help us not to be moved by emotions. That's right, Candace. Help us not to be moved by what our family did before us. But as we go into that box to vote, that ballot box, God, you, Holy Spirit, be our guide. Show us where to mark. Lord, don't let us get caught up in offense either. Being bitter or angry. God, don't let us do that. Help our hearts to be hearts of flesh, not hearts of stone. Help us to honor our government, God, and honor our leaders. We pray for continual protection over Donald Trump. Y'all could say in the name of Jesus, we pray protection over Kamala Harris. Death is death, y'all. We don't want no one to die. We want it to be a fair election. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Elliot. So, Lord, we submit this election here to you. Come on, y'all, let's stand on our feet. Join hands with somebody next to you. Join hands with somebody next to you. You keep your eyes closed. God, in fact, join hands straight across the aisle. Straight across the aisle, grab somebody's hand. We submit this election here to you. This is power heads. We submit 2024. Father, whatever wave is coming, protect us like you did for Jeremiah. Somebody say, Lord, protect me. Lord, protect me. Say it in me and say, Lord, protect me. Let me ask you a question, Jump. You can look at me. Were we protected during COVID? Yes. He surely did, Monica. For real, for real, your God really protect us. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I want you to hear this. We, str I strive, we, str we strive more during COVID than we strive when there was no COVID. <laughs> That's the truth. I, you know, that sounds like a cliche, but I'm telling you the truth. We prospered more during COVID than when, it, when COVID was over. <laughs> God, I'm telling you, Jeff, it's the truth. We were so blessed. During COVID, then when COVID was over, God really, food. We were feeding people. We fed probably almost 20,000 meals. Someone from the Orlando Magic was cooking the food for us to take the meals. A chef from the Orlando Magic was cooking the food. We had groceries in here. God blessed us during COVID, Joe. That's the same way we want God to continue to bless us. Doing whatever that comes, he continue to bless us. Is that right? So, Father, as we join hands tonight, hold that hand in the air. 
We thank you for, for your, so you know, that, you know what I just heard? I believe. He said, if I protect you then, I'll protect you now. Eyes closed. That's what I, I believe I heard that. That's, the, that's how we know they had COVID then, that we know something coming now. I hear the Lord saying, if I protect you then, I will protect you now. Someone take a deep breath. Yeah. He said, if I protect you then, I have never had COVID. I have never had COVID. I give God, make sure you hear me. I said I didn't get sick, but I never had it. I've been testing, testing, testing. I never lose no taste for no food. I had all the taste for my food. Thank you, Jesus. He said, if I protect you then. Somebody say, Lord, I thank you. Just open your mouth. He's listening. You got to confess it. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, we thank you for your divine protection. I read that scripture really rang with me, Odis with Jeremiah. That, that, that gave me comfort. I heard that. And, and Pastor Coco of that with Cyrus, that really blessed me. Too. That ble- you had to bless me tonight. I heard God in it. Thank you for your protection, God. Even though we don't deserve it, you keep on protecting us. Y'all give me eyes. Also to today, y'all, let me say this. Jonathan Shoes came out today. I know they're watching. It came out today where people could pre-order. Jonathan called me and told me all 12 and a half sold out. All the 12 and a half sold out. Oh, y'all, I say all the 12, us men. All the 12 and a half sold out. And it just came out today. Isn't it awesome? So I went online to check it out. I hit 12 and a half. It said sold out. And it just came out today. That's the pre-order. Isn't God good, y'all? Y'all clap your hands one more time. Sold out. Quinn. So y'all ain't here. Y'all ain't sound happy with that, but that makes me feel good. That makes me feel good. Somebody say, sell out, Unitas. Sell out, Unitas. Say it again. Say, sell out, Unitas. Sell out, Unitas. Amen. The more Unitas is blessed, the more we bless you. That's right. That's right. That's right, Mr. Thomas. Sell out. When he told me that today, and he told me that late in the conversation, I said, brother, you're supposed to lead with that. That should have been the first thing you say to me. How come you're in lead with that? That's good news. Look at somebody say, that's good news. Look at somebody else say, that's good news. You know what that's setting up for? That all the shoes will sell out. Come on, clap. I'll sell. It's setting up that all, and close. And close. That's what it's setting up. I called Plumber today. I say, Plumber, all the shoes sell out. He said, I'm going online to get mine right now. While he was online getting his, my wife was already online getting hers. Get your shoes. That's the way we support him. Not by what we say, by what we do. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, tonight we thank you for this service. Anybody got anything of this service? Anybody glad that we had this? It was, it was needed. Was it needed? It was needed. Father, we thank you for this service. Monica, stop baking them sweets. You're trying to get all of us. I, he's trying to give all of us diabetes. Monica, I ate that banana pudding. I don't know what you did to that banana pudding, but I wanted to eat the cup. Stop trying to kill us, Monica. I don't know what you're doing with these sweets, but they're so good. Please don't stop. (laughs) Anybody had any of those banana pudding? Am I joking? Wasn't that banana? What is she putting in them banana pudding? And it'll see my mind. I forget I was going to pray. See what you're doing? Close your eyes. So, Father, bless the offering. <laughs> We're getting ready to give on good ground. On what? Great ground. Great ground. I'll, you could tell Patrice in church tonight. She was quiet. We quit. What kind of ground? ground? Let's get ready to give our best to the Lord tonight, y'all. Let's give our best to the Lord tonight.
plumber that was so well said so well said Odis you made me want to go read Jeremiah Pastor Kokoroff you want me to go read Cyrus I love it that was so well said Isn't it good that we could talk like this in church, though? I wish as a little boy I, we had more of this. I, I don't think I ever remember talking like this in church. Everything was always just church, 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 church. But we still got to leave church to go back into the world. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? We don't deal with issues. Pastor Elliot, you ain't say nothing tonight. You was just quiet. Pastor Elliot was just taking it in. Thank you. Sold out of 12, only 12 and a half and just opened today. And they're not even out there. It was a pre-order. So good. When you all see him, make sure tell him congratulations. And don't tell him congratulations until you get your own shoe. Put your, come tell him congratulations with your shoe on. Right on, right on, right on your envelope. God grant me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. God grant me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So well said. Y'all talk so matured tonight, Pastor Krokoff. You and Plumber and Udi, so matured. So good. So well said. Can hear the maturity. Um, uh, Bishop Camp, y'all, is getting ordained August the 15th, I think, or 16th. He texted me today. I think it's August the 16th. I want Plumber to go with me, Odis to go with me, Levon to go with me. Joey to go with me. I want seven men to go with me to the Bahamas. Now, that don't mean I pay anyway. Get your money to get it to go. JB to go with me to the Bahamas. Hotel, go with me to the Bahamas to see Bishop Cam get ordained back into the Assemblies of God. He's getting reordained back into the Assemblies of God Church. And he asks for us to come. He asks for me to come, but I want us to go take and support him. Bring your best suit, bring your collars. Your best black and white suits, your callers. We're going to go and support him in his ordination. Go to the Bahamas for the weekend. Freeport, Bahamas for the weekend. I want to take seven of the men with me. Several of the men. I know some of the ladies looking like, I won't go. Well, y'all could go to whoever want to go. Bring your callers. But you got to buy your own plane ticket and hotel. Amen? Get your callers. Let's, get, let's go around with the baskets. Let's raise the offering. Sold out. Stephanie, so good to see your daughter sitting beside you, growing in the house of the Lord. No better place to raise your children. No better place to raise your children. Can't go wrong with that. No better place. You ain't doing nothing wrong, bringing them to the house of the Lord. Best economy in the world. Let's stand on our feet. Let's get ready to go home. Wave your envelopes. Stephanie, where's your niece who hurt her arm? Oh, she went back home. You tell her we're praying for her. You let her know that. This young man that's coming, and this, keep coming. I'm proud of you. You keep pressing. How you heard about us? You keep coming. Proud of you. You've been pressing your way, boy, listening. Keep coming. I know I see him. He ain't been missing a service. Say it again. Tyrone, yeah, Tyrone ain't been missing. Tyrone ain't messing with none of y'all. He like what he see. I like that, Tyrone. Keep pressing your way. Let's bring up the baskets, y'all.
Aleluia. Do it, God. Somebody say, do it, God. Say it again. Say, do it, God. All the shoes sell out. All the shoes and all the clothes. Can God? Yes, he can. Nobody could do it like Jesus. <clears throat> Point your hands. That's right. Point your hands at your seat. Father, we thank you for increase. For what? <clears throat> In increasing us, y'all. Is he increasing us? <clears throat> increase. That's it, young lady. Hallelujah. Go, Unitas, go. I feel like we're competing with Nike and Adidas oh, on that level, y'all. They could sell, we could sell. Yes. Whoever said that's true, that's right. They could do it, we could do it. So God bless the seed. <clears throat> Multiply it to the giver. If you would have liked to give tonight but had nothing to give, come to the front. Bishop, I wish I could have give, but had nothing to give. Come to the front. If you would have liked to give but have nothing to give, come to the front. That means everybody had something to give. Point your hands at your seat. Stacy, I see you in the bad day. How are you feeling, Stacy? Good girl. What are they saying about the cancer? Oh, clap your hand, y'all. <laughs> y'all heard that? Did y'all hear that? She said she had a left side check and there's nothing there. Come on, clap your hand one more time. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you, Stacy. Wow, man. Isn't that awesome? Oh, my God. Do it, God. Somebody say, do it, God. Point your hands at us. Say, do it, God. Point your hands at Stacy. Say, do it, God. Amen. Just keep your heart clear, Stacy. No offense, no grudge, no bitter. Keep it clear. That devil can't find no place in you. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Is that key? That's key. I see you. I see you. She sees you. She know I'm looking at her. Lord, bless this seed now. Let this be a sweet smell. God, let the day come. Anybody who believes that this could happen, let the day come where all of us drive brand new cars. If you believe that can happen, take a step. I said, if you believe that, somebody step in the aisle. That's right. That's, excuse me. I love that. I love the way she stepped. That can happen for you. God, that we could ride, walk in here one day, God, and buy each other cars. Just like that. How many of you know it'll be great to have Toyota as one of our sponsors? They say, how many people in your old church? I want to sponsor everybody with a truck. I want to sponsor, or Lexus is one of our sponsors. Or Tesla. Who's the owner of Tesla? Y'all, y'all went quiet. Y'all better know these people. Elon Musk say he won't bless everybody and jump with a car. Oprah did it. Imagine Elon Musk hearing about this ministry and say, I won't bless everybody in that ministry with a car. And we go outside and there's cars for everybody. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. Can God do that, y'all? Could you imagine? If you could think it and dream it, it could happen. Oh, Manila. If you could think it and dream it, it could happen. Father, bless the seed. How about it be one of us that do it? How about it be one of us? You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. That's right, Monica. Help us, Lord. So, Lord, remember the seed. God, when we bless, help us to be faithful stewards. That's right, Monica. If you hear me today, take a step. And God, when you bless us, help us to remember to be a blessing. Don't let us be selfish. God, don't let us forget where we came from. You said in your word, every good, let him stamp, he could stamp. You said in your word, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Has God been good to anyone in this church? Yes. I'm asking you a question, has God been good to anyone in this? Yes. We cover Tiana under the blood of Jesus. Lord, let our children know you. Keep our children tonight, God. Keep our children tonight. 
Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Keep, somebody say, keep my children. Say it again. Say, keep my children. I know some of y'all ain't got no children. Say, keep my family. Lord, we thank you for it now. Raise your hands. Father, as we go tonight, thank you for the wisdom you shared with us tonight to how to know. Help us to move on the wisdom. Let the word find good ground. Father, don't let no one feel like someone's trying to sway them. Let their choice be their choice. God, just give us wisdom. Just give us knowledge. That's right, whoever said yes, and please give us understanding. Cover this church under the blood of Jesus. Help us to discern the naysayers. Even as Jesus discerned why they were questioning him, give us that discernment that we will know that people are doing things with a greater purpose. Give us a discernment, God. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Say it in me. I promise you he's listening. Say, in the name of Jesus. Grab somebody neck, let them know you're loving with this miss from this place. Not a grab. Get connected with Jump Ministries Global Church. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media networks and never miss out on our bi-monthly men and women's prayer services, our youth events and activities, our global outreach and community celebrations, our competitions, conferences, or even just to get that one word to encourage you. Just visit jumpministries.org. Building people, changing lives, and on the move. Joyously unveiling the master's plan. Discover your faith. Experience Jump Ministries Global Church. So if you go to the wrong people for comfort, they can keep you in your condition. Building people. Changing lives. And on the move. Jump Ministries Global Church.